pitching a fly 101. We've got a pretty sweet clearing here, but the ropes on our tarp aren't long enough to go from tree to tree. So there's a couple of ways you can get around that. You can put a couple of poles in the ground and a peg either side, or you can use a main line to string all the way across the clearing. I prefer a main line because you can get this main line really tight and then you can tie the tarpaulin onto the main line and it just gives it a bit more rigidity, especially in heavy rain or if it's really stormy, having a really good centre line. And this is the throwbacks, just rope in a bag, but you can use any kind of rope. Yep, pull it tight. Here we have the Stony Creek Stealth Fly. This fly has got to be one of my favourite pieces of equipment. It's small, it's compact, it provides shelter in the rain, it's really quick and easy to set up, it has some really good features and it's also extremely strong. We've had this out in gale force winds. Forecast has changed from 100 km an hour winds to 120 km an hour winds. So it's 11 o'clock at night, the winds are gusting 120 km per hour. It's really windy. The other three flies that I had are the brands, I won't say which brands, they all tore to shreds. Whereas the Stony Creek flies hung in there. Alright, let's set it up. There we go, that's a great feature there. It's got a little bit of elastic that holds it in. Yep, pull it out. Pull the whole thing out, there we go. Unwind it. So we're just putting a half hitch in right here. All right, now we're gonna pull that tight and do the same. Pull your rope up through there, through that hole. Just a half hitch. That's the one. Just leave it like that, just like that, that's it. See that, now we've got a tight tarpaulin and it's gonna be quick and easy to undo. Right now you want this side nice and even, so don't pull it too tight, otherwise, watch the tarp, you'll see how tight to pull it. Just there, that's pretty good, yep. See it's nice and flat and even there. The trick is to have this first side nice and even and then you can tighten the tarp up or tauten it from the other side when you tie the other side up. So the boys are just finishing off this knot and then we're going to go over the other side, stretch it out and get it nice and tight. You want to go hunting dog? Yes, you just stay there patiently waiting. Good dog. Yep, that's pretty good. Can you boys tie it there? That's looking real good, eh? Now, a couple of things to consider when you're pitching your tarpaulin. Wind and rain. Which way is the wind going to come from? And is it going to blow the rain underneath the tarpaulin? And if it's going to rain, is the water going to spill off? This is really important if it's heavy rain. You've got to have the water spilling off both sides of the tarp. You don't want any sagging spots where the water can collect. Otherwise, the tarp can sag right to the ground and it'll get you wet as well. If it's just a nice sunny day and you just want it to keep the dew off and there's no rain forecast, you can pitch it however... But if it's going to rain, really think about which way the wind's going to come from. And you might want to peg it right down to the ground. If it's just nice, still, in a sheltered spot like this, then it's not such a big deal. Because it's just going to be light drizzle, so we just want the roof on top of us. Also, you might want to stand up and move around under the tarp. Or it might be just to set the tarp up and go to sleep. So there's all these different things to consider. The boys have set it up at a pretty nice height here. They can still walk under it. And they'll be able to sleep under it pretty easily too. Me on the other hand, I'll have to crawl around under there. And that's looking pretty good. We're not actually camping tonight because kids have got sport in the morning. So we just come out here to go deer hunting actually and rabbit hunting. We're just waiting for it to get a little bit darker. It's almost deer o'clock. Except the boys have been yelling a little bit, so we might not see anything. But hopefully we will. If we don't shoot a deer, we'll probably shoot a rabbit. We may even shoot a rabbit and a deer. Back at the back cave, and just going to show you fellas a technique to put bomb proof stakes in, or storm staking, I like to call it. Storm staking 101, let's go with that. All right, pull it boys, see if you can pull it out. Oh, what happened now, first stick snap. Oh, go, on. pull, pull. Oh, hey, there we go. So there you go, that's how to set up storm stakes. 
the first stick actually failed right at the bottom of the stick so if you use slightly stronger pegs the stick ain't going to fail but it was quite a good amount of force required to pull those pegs out so that's one method you can set up storm stakes another method is this one here all right go pull boys pull pull it out go pull it pull harder harder can't get it eh look at that that's pretty strong isn't it so one anchor to two anchors to six anchors all right so just for the record i've set up self equalizing anchors so there's equal amount of pull on each of the three anchors running off the two i'm not going to show you how to do that just google how to set up a self equalizing anchor bob's your uncle catch you later